All right, what's up guys? What's up product school? Uh, my name is Brandon Reed and I'm a senior product manager at the Walt Disney Company. Uh, and I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about brand and um, why it's important to build your brand, how um, m mostly really how a successful brand can help you build successful products because we're here to talk about product. Um, and yeah, let's dig, let's dig right in. Let's not delay any further. Let me share my screen Go here. Okay. Do this. Okay, great. Let's do this. Um, let me uh, also first say that, of course, everything I share is, uh, is views of my own, my personal views, um, and not the company's. Uh, so uh, the topic I'm going to cover is building with a passion, how the mission of your brand drives the success of your products. Um, and I'll also say um, that, you know, as I was as I was preparing this and building the slides or whatever, I was like trying to make it look good and stuff. And I was like, what am I'm not shouldn't be spending my time on this. I should be spending my time on the content. So there's nothing pretty about what you're about to see. It's literally bullet points, which I know is kind of the worst. Um, but hopefully it's strong content and things that you guys can really learn from and take something from. But it ain't going to look super pretty. I put a Mickey Mouse in the corner for you. So that's that's kind of cool. Uh, but anyways, here's a little bit about me. I'll go quickly through and kind of how I uh, how I ended up where I am today. So graduated 2013 from Baylor University, Sikkim Bears, um, and then moved down here to Orlando to do an internship. But before that, I graduated in May. Internship started in August. And um, I flew down here ahead of time to kind of talk to some people and talk about what it would, you know, get my, getting my foot in the door um, and what, you know, what that entailed and uh, get some advice from people. And one thing I heard over and over was if you have the opportunity to, uh, and before you, you know, when you're starting your career at Disney, work in the parks, get operations experience, um, get your hands on our product from the guest point of view and see it from that standpoint, um, which was super value, valuable, um, great advice, and has really helped uh, shape our brand in my mind. Um, and I've gone back to those experiences over and over again. So I was a photo pass photographer in the park um, at Magic Kingdom. I dressed in a costume and I held a camera. And as people came in and walked into the Magic Kingdom, I took pictures of them uh, and saw our guests experiencing our brand and our products um, from that point of view. It was super valuable. Then I did my internship um, in technology. Um, I was more of a project manager role um, and did that uh, uh yeah, I converted from internship to full time uh, sometime in like 2013, 14, but it was more technology like back end data systems. And then made my way over to the digital experience, which is the highest level essentially. I, I work on the mobile apps um, and, and build features and functionality in the apps um, to uh, enhance our guests' digital experience while they're in the parks, while they're on vacation, um, uh, yeah, to make them more magical digitally. So that's what I do now. Uh, let's start just clicking through here. Believe in the brand. When teams are bought, oh, and also let me say, before I dig too far in here, that um, of course I'll share uh, what I believe on these topics, uh, my thoughts, my opinions on this stuff. But um, I also know, and, and, and hopefully that's valuable, but I, I'll also share, um, you know, a little bit about, I know when you probably saw on LinkedIn or Facebook or wherever you saw this, it said, you know, senior product manager at Disney. And you were like, ooh, Disney, I want to see how they build products at Disney. And of course, I can't talk about what I'm working on or anything uh, specific. Um, but, I, you know, at the highest level, I'll share what's, what's really public knowledge and general knowledge about how Disney builds products. Um, and uh, how, how we do it so that you can apply and learn and do things, um, you know, where applicable, how Disney does. So hopefully I can, you know, share some of that insight as well. But anyways, let me, let me get back to the first point. When teams are bought into what your brand stands for, you approach the process with, with an aligned goal of fighting to protect it. I just think it's uh, so important that, of course, your brand is, um, is clearly... Uh, defined that the people that are working to build the products that support that brand understand what the definition of that brand is um, and that they're all, all aligned towards it, that they believe in it. Um, because, you know, one thing that honestly that happens really, really well at Disney is we believe in Disney. We believe in the brand and we fight to protect it. The products we build, we care about what it does to our brand, how it makes our company look, 
Um, and uh, yeah, that's important and really powerful when you're building products. Users trust provides space for innovation, but commands thoughtfulness and comes with greater responsibility. So um, I say users, because I know that's in, especially in technology, what most people um, refer to to customers as we, we say guests uh, at Disney World. Uh, and I'm in specifically, I didn't say this earlier, but sp- specifically in the parks and resorts segment, obviously Disney does a lot of things, but I'm in the parks and resorts segment. So the apps I work on are, are for guests in the parks. And um, yeah, our guests, uh, the trust that they have in the Disney brand, of course, Disney is one of the most trusted brands in the world. Um, and uh the, the, that trust, um, it allows more, I guess, wiggle room, right? I, I'm almost benefit of the doubt that uh, our guests give us that sometimes I choke, you know, if we push it a little too hard or maybe release too much functionality in the app in one area um, and the, the rolling out isn't as smooth as it could be, guests still open up our app, have a splash screen that is uh, Mickey's head that exploding in fireworks. Um, it's like the shape of Mickey's head. And are you kidding me? Like, that's awesome. So guests, like, even if maybe the app's a little glitchy, they, they, they see our strong IP, the brand that we've built, and there's wiggle room there and trust built there. Not everybody gets to enjoy Mickey Mouse on your splash screen and guests coming into your app with like the joy in their heart. Um, but we do. And so I, it, so it provides some of that room to, to, to press. But of course, also, that commands thoughtfulness. And, um, and it absolutely comes with greater responsibility. And we feel that weight at Disney as we're building products to support a world-class brand that we all believe in and care about um, is that we need to, the, the things we build um, um, need to align with the uh, yeah, the, the the vision we all the vision we've all been given about what Disney is, the brand we know it to be, what we believe it is, um, and so we take that very seriously. Is my point, and I think that's important in any business that you're in, um, any company to have employees that um, that are working towards a common goal. Like I said in the first point, and then also um, are uh, yeah are uh, working towards it. Um, I lost my train of thought. Hold on, but command thoughtfulness. Anyways, I'm not even going to go back through that point, but it is important, of course, that um, if you if you have trust in your brand, that uh, you work to protect that, of course. hope that made sense, especially with that fumble there at the end. Take care of and listen to your brand ambassadors. So, uh, of course, we all know, <laughs> specifically at Disney, those people who could be your aunt or your teacher, your neighbor, whatever, those people who love Disney World or Disneyland or um, any of our parks, Disney as a brand, the movies, um, and the, everybody goes to them for tips and tricks when they're going to go on a Disney vacation. And um, th- those people are brand ambassadors. And it's important that we take care of and listen to them, um, that we that we f- hear their feedback. They use our products often more than we do. They know our products well. They know our brand well. Um, and any company that you're working in, as you establish your brand, as you build your products, it's important that you listen to the people that know those products the best. You're in it. We all know. We're in it. We're in it every day. We know the features and functionality, the acceptance criteria, um, down to the end detail. But our, our, our users, our guests, our customers, whatever, that use it up here, but understand it very well, um, they have some of the most valuable feedback to, to offer. So listen and, and take care of them. It's really important. Mature and evolve. Um, of course, as you are building your brand, and if you get to the point um, where you have built a solid um, brand underneath you as a company, it's important that you don't stay there. Uh, push past that, mature, evolve with your customers as they mature and evolve, as the world matures and evolves, as tastes and interests um, and technology, if you're in technology, evolve, uh, move with that. Your brand should move with that um, and don't build a brand and then, and then stay there. Uh, is solid it, even as if you get to a solid place. Take time to observe how your users see you. Could they communicate what your brand stands for? Um, So a building that I used to work in, one of my first roles um, was actually backstage. So like not where the guests are in the park, but just behind that um, at Hollywood Studios. And I could walk out of the building and I could hear, I mean, if you've ever played Roller Coaster Tycoon, it's like exactly that soundtrack. Like you can just hear, you know, like everyone saw a scream, some laughter. Um, and I would walk around the building and I'd hear that. I'd hear our guests enjoying our products. The Tower of Terror is right there. If you're familiar with it, it's like the doors swing open. People scream out and like whatever. You can just hear it. Um, and uh, I would walk into the parks. I'd see people enjoying our products, um, observing how 
they're using them, how, uh, what, how the ways that they're using them um, defined, yeah, our brand, what we stood for, um, and all of that is correlated. All that is intertwined. And um, seeing often how they're using the products, if, if they were using them uh, in, in the apps and the functionality uh, in ways that we, are they using it in ways that we expected? Um, are they using it for the things we expected them to use them for? Um, and all of that, how all of that kind of, I guess, wraps up what my point is here is like how all that wraps up. Um, uh, could they use those products, experience your, um, your, our, our park, ride our rides, uh, eat our churros, and at the end of the day, be able to wrap up and communicate what our brand stands for. I think Disney does a phenomenal job of that. And I think most often our guests can say, this is what Disney stands for. And I think it's important that you, your brand, your products um, also can do that um, with your guests, users, customers. Culture-driven delivery. So um, obviously we all know the importance of culture. Um, and I can, I'll just share a little bit of uh, kind of what my experience is at Disney um, and uh, in products and why culture is important in, in what I've built. So create an atmosphere that reflects the products you want to build. Um, one thing that's so neat about Disney is that, uh, you know, so, so not, it's not uncommon to see people that worked there for 20, 25, 35, 40 years. Like that's not uncommon at all. Um, and that to me shows that we have created a culture and an atmosphere that, um, that is one that people want to be around and work for um, and uh, associate themselves with, a brand of excellence. People want to be around that. People are drawn to that. Um, and when you create a brand and an, um, a, a culture of excellence that reflects itself in the products that you build, I believe that so firmly. Like if, if what we associate ourselves with it, um, when we wear, I mean, Mickey Mouse, like when we wear our company um, gear, when we uh, say, hey, to anybody out in public, I work for Disney, um, they associate that immediately, of course, with excellence. Disney is an excellent brand. And so the products we build need to reflect that as well. And I think that's just a natural um a natural thing that could that would occur is if you build a brand around um, an image, the products that spit on the end of that will reflect that image. And so what is that image? Make sure it's um, something that you stand for, that you believe in, and that is excellent. I just think, of course, that's important. How Disney reinforces uh, culture. So there's some, um, there's some really neat things here. Uh, so that, that I'll go into a little bit, uh, specifically, I think, like with the buildings that I've worked in, you know, a lot of us are remote now, um, but people are coming back to work, they're coming back to the buildings and such. Um, and in the buildings, one thing that's just constantly reinforcing, who are we? What do we stand for? What's the culture here? Um, is a, a great one is that we named all, or not all of them, but in a lot of the buildings I worked in, a lot of the conference rooms were named after our characters, after our IP, our intellectual property. So you'd say like, Hey, are you going to make it to the 3.30 in Simba? Or, um, hey, later we got to talk to that group over in Tinkerbell. And, you know, it's funny because just, you know, we don't even realize it anymore as we say those things. But um, I, I think that matters. I think that it matters to, um, to integrate um, what your company is, the culture you want to create, into even mundane things like that, conference room names. Um, another cool thing is... Um, you know, in, in one of the buildings I worked in, there was a mural. It, it was uh, where uh, movies used to be created, and then they converted it into an office building. And so, but they built like these murals in the hallways of the characters of the movies that were animated there, um, that were created there. And that was, you just walk the hallways and you can feel that energy. Um, I think Lilo and Stitch, if I'm remembering right, um, was was animated in that building. And so you walk down, you see Lilo and Stitch like riding a wave in a mural. Um in the hallway. And again, I think that stuff matters and instills and reinforces culture, um, even in, um, even in the in-between, even as you're walking from meeting to meeting. Um, and then, oh yeah, the third thing here, I got my notes is, um, is I, like one of my favorite parts of working for the company is product discovery. So that's what we call it, right? We're like, oh man, we really gotta get, we really gotta, as a team, we gotta get some product discovery and we really gotta go 
discover the product. So got to get to Magic Kingdom. So we like, you know, we'll go into the parks. We will ride the rides. We will meet the characters. We will uh, uh, have the food and we will experience our product from our guest point of view. And that to me, of course, it's fun. And of course, um, you know, that's that that does all the things that, you know, team bonding and outside of work moments do. But it, re, it I think it's one of the most valuable things we do for our work, though. I just do. I think that it, uh, it we, you know, we joke product discovery, but it truly is that. It's us uh, rediscovering and reinforcing what do we stand for? What are our products um, stand for? What are, we, what are we building? What are we building towards? What are we building in support of? All of this, um, as, you know, as we look around and experience our parks. And um, I think that, you know, of course, not everybody has a theme park that they can go into to remember their uh, their their brand and, and get reinstilled the culture of their company. Um, but in whatever way you can, I just think that's really important to do. I think reinstilling culture, even in the in-between, I think is my point ultimately. And even in the in-between, even in the mundane, um, I think often reinstilling um, your culture and what you stand for is important. And I think that it helps to deliver effective products. Um, and still culture from the outset. So um, right away at Disney, um, we our orientation is called Traditions, and it's a, a really a really special time. And you learn all about the company and the, and the magic behind it and the vision that Walt had. And anyways, um, there's uh, something you learn there called, and again, um, this isn't anything proprietary in any way. It's totally public knowledge. But the, the Disney Scoop. I mean, you may have read it on a blog or seen it somewhere. But like the Disney Scoop to me stood out in my traditions class because I thought it was awesome. So what the Disney Scoop is is um, if you're uh, a cast member and you're, uh, of course, if you're working, but then even if you're off duty or whatever, you're not working and you're there as a guest uh, with your family in the parks, um, you if you see trash, you bend over and you pick it up, but do it on the move. You Disney scoop it um, because you don't need to draw attention to the fact that there's trash at Walt Disney World. Just pick it up and throw it away. Take care of the park. And it, 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 always, whether you're working or you're not, take care of the park. And that, that um, the culture of take care of this, of this treasure that we all have, which is Disney, the Disney brand. Um, and whether you're working or you're not, um, uh, take care of it care for it, I care about it, and and do it even in a simple Disney scoop to throw away a wrapper that you saw on Main Street USA, which I just think is is so neat and something uh, that I think Disney does really well, of course. Understanding the mission um, and how the mission associates um, to brand, of course, they're very intertwined. Uh, at that traditions class, um, <clears throat> you know, we learned so much about what the company does. Disney has its hand in so many different things. But in the end, um, and I don't know how they structure it now, um, but but when when I, when I went through it, um, you know, and I know, of course, this is still the the, the motto. Um, but we said, okay, we do all these things, and there's all these different brands that Disney has, and we do all these different things. But the main thing, the one thing, the most important thing that we do as the Walt Disney Company, we create happiness. Um, and that that's so succinct, so clear. Um, and there's obviously so many tertiary things that go down of like what each segment of the business does and um, what, what, what part of that vision each group drives forwards. But in the end, we all create happiness. And that being a mission is one that everybody can get on board with, of course, and, um, and build towards and build for as we, as we build products. <clears throat> all right. Let me, oh yeah, nice. I also had a note um, about We Create Happiness, uh, a, a Walt quote, of course, um, that I just love. It's somehow, I can't believe that there are any heights that can't be scaled by a man who knows the secrets of making dreams come true. Are you kidding me? <laughs> That's awesome, goosebumps. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, that that sums up again, the mission of we create happiness, we make dreams come true, um, and we all truly, what I've seen at Disney, almost entirely across the board, is we all believe that, work towards it, and protect that mission. If you can, at all costs, um, instill that and breed that, create that in the company that you're in, in the brand and products you're building. Empower your teams to carry out your mission. Um, you know, as you've established your mission, as you communicate it, empower your teams, your employees to um, to carry that out, to help define it in real in real life, tangibly. 
Um, at Disney, they do a great job of that. They give us the opportunity to help guests in the park when, when we aren't even um, uh, working, when we're there as guests uh, more than one time. I have seen uh, a kid drop their ice cream. It's hot in Florida. It melts and kids just like hold it as they're looking up at whatever and and the scoop drops off. And I go up, uh, grab grab the kid and his family and say, guys, come with me. I'm a cast member. Um, and I have my little cast ID. I go up to the uh, the counter and say, hey, this this boy lost or dropped his ice cream or whatever. Can we get him another one? And they just, on the spot, they get it. And that's empower. And the reason I even did that or thought to do that was I was told, like, that opportunity is there. If you see somebody, if you see a guest need, serve that need, meet that need, even if you're not working. Um, and I just love that. I think that that is empowerment um, at such a a, a clear and, and really powerful level um, that if you breathe that in your company and are able to effectively communicate that to your teams, they, they can carry out your mission and and help define it. Uh, don't dictate it from the top down. We've all, of course, we've all heard this. Um, you know, Disney doesn't always do it right either. Um, but it's so important that as you're stating your mission, as you're defining it amongst your teams, that it's not given from on high, that it's not, here's our mission, everybody carry it out, go. But that you instill, and this goes back to my previous slides, like you instill the culture, you enforce the brand such that like it builds from the bottom up, that it builds, that it builds from the working teams, the people that are in the in the mud every day, building these um, these experiences, these products, whatever, however they're involved, that it builds from there, that the mission is understood at its most basic and um, and core component levels there. And then that just breeds on up and it creates that, that, that foundation that is way stronger than if it's just communicated and told from up top and say, guys, believe in this. Um, it's important first that you build that foundation and really breed uh, a culture that can create that, um, that environment and uh, help, help to carry out that mission. <clears throat> I think I, I hope I communicated that well. Um, reinforce your mission often. I know I've talked some about this um, in other points, but one thing that my leader does really well at Disney is we will, as we have our all hands and we're all, you know, talking, um, it's when everybody's at a meeting together, he reads guest letters. I mean, that's, it's really, it's a neat part of Disney that guests write in letters. They can write, they'll write to Bob Chapek, our, our CEO, and um, he will like disseminate those letters down, read them and pass them to the lines of business that, um, that were impacted by the letter or the, the letter discussed. And he'll read um, letters from guests that were impacted by the products that we're building. Um, and uh, that is such an effective way. I see the room, I see the way demeanors shift. And it feels to me to be such a powerful way to, um, yeah, reinforce um, the mission that we're all a part of, the brand that we're building um, and the products that we're building every day. So that's a neat way that, that we do that at Disney. Realign your strategic direction <clears throat> if what you're building deviates from your mission. I see so often you march down the road, you've written the user stories, you've gotten the sign off from the different you know, uh, stakeholders and business partners, and you're already halfway down and you realize at some point that you've deviated from what ultimately we're all working towards. Does this product really meet the needs of the guest in the direction we know we're we need to be in, um, the needs we know we need to be meeting, um, the mission and brand that we know is established and that our guests trust us with, like are the products we're building aligning towards that? And um, again, Disney doesn't always do this perfectly. No company does, but it's important that we still be diligent, I think, to as we're building products to stop. There's no point at which it is too far that we can't do some realignment to say <clears throat> we should be working towards um, the end goal that we all know is there and, and is believed and has been defined at our company instead of building something that just becomes a thing of its own and then is the end ends up in the hand of our users, guests, customers, whatever. And um, it does not um, and is not aligned with ultimately uh, what we know our company stands for. So I think it's just important that we feel freedom to realign when we need to. I think that's the last point on that page. Yep. So that's it. Thank you. Um, I will leave with a quote from Walt, of course, um, uh, that I think applies here. So <clears throat> when you believe in a thing, believe in it all the way, implicitly and unquestionable. 
goosebumps again, um, <laughs> that, uh, that I think really applies to product, um, product people in particular, because believe what you're building in, believe it all the way. Uh, if you don't, you will find yourself running into any of the situations. I mean, some of them I just walked through, um, building products in a direction that your brand doesn't ultimately stand for, um, meeting needs that your customers, clients, whatever, don't ultimately have, um, and ultimately building and establishing a brand that maybe you or your company don't believe in. Believe in what you're building. Believe it all the way. Um, and that will help you build, I think, successful effective products that meet the needs of the people you're building for. Uh, that's how you can reach out to me. There's my email. There's my LinkedIn, bsr.read at gmail. You can shoot me an email. And then, uh, yeah, there's my LinkedIn URL as well. Um, super informal. Would love to hear from any of you guys. Can answer any questions um, about anything that I covered today. So I believe that that is it. Um, yeah, again, please reach out to me. Um, would love to hear from you guys. I hope today was helpful and that I could some somewhat clearly articulate um, the points that I made today. Anyways, thanks so much, guys. Take care. Bye, Product School.